Hi everyone, welcome to Ahmed Academy and welcome to this video on pericoronitis. So in this video we'll discuss what is pericoronitis, its diagnosis and also its management using two specific guidelines. So before we begin guys, give this video a thumbs up and also make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. So what is pericoronitis? Essentially it's the inflammation of the soft tissues surrounding the crown of a partially erupted tooth, including the gingivae and the dental follicle, the soft tissue covering a partially erupted tooth is known as an operculum as indicated and it creates an area which can be difficult to access with normal oral hygiene methods so, so essentially it's the inflammation of the soft tissue surrounding the partially erupted tooth here which is normally impacted by its adjacent tooth not allowing it to fully erupt into the oral cavity creating this little pocket where food and debris can get trapped uh, creates a hot spot for plaque to retain there stagnate and cause an inflammatory reaction causing pain to the patient and all the other manifestations of pericoronitis that we'll touch on in a moment. So in terms of its diagnosis, pericoronitis is a diagnosis by exclusion where if a patient is having these symptoms, you've got to consider other conditions that the patient may be suffering from such as TMJ disorder. So the presentations are quite similar. So swelling and tenderness of the operculum and around the wisdom tooth. So the tenderness of the operculum and the tissues around it, around the wisdom tooth, bad taste, disturbed sleep, poorly responsive to analgesics and possible limited mouth opening. So all of this is pretty similar to TMJ disorder except the fact the patient may be experiencing headaches, you may witness clicking of the jaw and sleep is not disturbed whereas with pericoronitis it is disturbed. So how do we manage this? This management program is specifically for local measures that you can do for a case where the lesion is local. There's no systemic involvement yet where the patient is not experiencing severe Christmas, difficulty swallowing or any type of fever increased temperature that would indicate you administering things such as antibiotics. How would you address this type of patient? So first of all uh, there is an emphasis on improved oral hygiene to clean out that area uh, to prevent the area flaring up and by removal of plaque stagnation area through RSD root surface debridement or subgingival scaling to help clear that area and then on top of that educating the patient to keep that area clean and if that's not possible then tooth extraction is our definitive treatment which prevents the source of inflammation because the source of inflammation is that tooth within that socket which helps food get stuck in there. You can also apply some gel and uh, benzodiamine mouthwashes are another way to go to numb the area whilst the patient is going through the course of treatment in order to help them make it more comfortable when they are eating. The Scottish guidelines specifically uh, touch on when to administer antibiotics and as we mentioned, it's when there are systemic involvements such as fever, difficulty swallowing and severe trismus. And then at that point, you are looking to administer metronidazole tablets, 400 mg, one tablet three times daily for a three day regime or amoxicillin 500 mg for the same regime. Another question that pops into my mind here is when do you decide to extract the tooth and when do you decide to keep? And when we go on to the NICE guidelines, they have a nice piece on it, kindly guiding us on when and how to make that decision um, between keeping the tooth and extracting it. First of all, the impacted third molars should be limited to patients with evidence of pathology. So if there is any evidence of pathology relating to that specific tooth, whereas it's unstorable caries, palpable pathology, or the fact the tooth is embedded within a lesion in the jaw, it is severely indicated to surgically remove that tooth, even though there are risks to do with the nerve in that specific area. Another indication for removing the tooth is when the patient is having severe pericoronitis where the pain is unbearable, a recurrent rate of pericoronitis. And the evidence suggests that a first episode of pericoronitis, unless particularly severe, should not be considered an indication for surgery. Second or subsequent episodes should be considered the appropriate indication for surgery and removing that tooth. So the times we want to remove the tooth is when there is pathology associated with the tooth itself or the area around it, or the patient is experiencing severe pericoronitis or repeated episodes. Other than that, our management is the same as our local measures here, improved oral hygiene, removal of the plaque in that specific area, uh, managing the symptoms using analgesics and also mouthwashes that have numbing agents in them. However, if the patient experiences severe or repeated episodes of pericoronitis or go on to develop any pathology relating to the tooth, we go on to extract. So all the sources that we use to create this informative slide, all of them, the links will be in the description 
description section below so i hope you gained something from this video leave a like and also subscribe to the channel for more videos like this so yeah i'll catch you in the next one